our fourth unit is shiva are you there diploma yes ma'am okay laplace transforms and z transform two, two uh, separate units were there actually now we included both the transforms under same chapter so let us start with laplace transform put the heading laplace transform so already we have studied fourier transform right please write notes properly laplace transform introduction so fourier transform first we started with fourier series then fourier transform is there isn't it vikrant are you there okay fourier series fourier transform then laplace transform then z transform again from fourier transform short term fourier transform discrete fourier transform and dtft is also there discrete time fourier transform discrete fourier transform short term fourier transform wavelet transform like this some advanced transformation techniques have been derived based on fourier transform this is the basic concept from which all the different types of transformation techniques have been derived to design the adaptive filters to analyze image processing techniques for morphological processing all the uh, transformation techniques will be used as a tool in implementation of enhancement techniques it may be image enhancement techniques wavelet water mapping okay fourier transform is a basic concept there in fourier transform we are changing the time domain information into frequency domain right in the same manner laplace transform also there will be a change in domain z transform also there will be change in the domain z domain we are changing into z domain so coming to laplace transform if x of t is our time domain signal its laplace transform is represented as x of s s domain here that means laplace transform of x of t is represented as x of s like in case of fourier transform how did we write fourier transform of x of t we have represented it as capital x, x of, of omega omega yes so similarly like fourier transform even here laplace transform also some formula will be there to find the laplace transform okay x of s is equal to minus infinite to infinite our signal x of t is multiplied with e power minus st into dt like here what was the formula we have x of omega minus infinite to infinite our signal x of t is multiplied with e power minus j omega t dt this was a formula right similarly this is a formula for finding laplace transform of a time domain signal x of t clear everyone please note this write the laplace transform formula first of all this equation x of s equal to minus infinite to infinite x of t into this is dot into e power minus st okay please copy this everyone x of s so this is nothing but formula for what laplace transform of x of t just to note on this formula here in this s is a complex variable complex variable okay where s is written as sigma plus j omega s is written as sigma plus j omega okay so here sigma is nothing but real part of s and imaginary part of s is omega isn't it please copy simultaneously along with me maintain notes properly introduction to laplace transform using laplace transform time domain signal is changed to s domain capital x of s this is a representation and the formula how to convert it into s domain means signal multiplied with kernel this is a kernel to convert a time domain signal into s domain what is s here s is a complex variable so s function is having a real part as well as imaginary part is there sigma sigma plus j omega this is a representation of s sigma is real part of s imaginary part of s is omega all of you copied this shall i raise a content on the board
Sai Kiran, Niharika, Pooja, Vaishali. Copy sign. Okay. Yes, so here, Copy. next. Existence of Laplace transform. Put the heading. Existence of Laplace transform. Like in case of Fourier transform and Fourier series, do you all remember we were having some conditions? It must have finite minima, finite maxima. It must be absolutely integrable. Like that, some conditions were there. For those set of conditions, what was the name given there? Dirichlet's conditions, isn't it? In the same manner, for the existence of Laplace transform also, there is a one condition. Okay. There is one condition for existence of Laplace transform. First of all, uh, uh, listen here, even though we have Fourier transform, why we are going for Laplace transform means, first, if I start with the Fourier series concept, do you all remember what is the disadvantage with Fourier series? What was the disadvantage with Fourier series? It is applicable only for periodic signals, isn't it? It is applicable only for periodic signals. It is not applicable for non-periodic signals. Similarly, for Fourier transform, if you see, it is applicable for both periodic as well as non-periodic. But for some signals like U of t, signum of t, for these kind of signals, we cannot use a formula directly to find Fourier transform. If you solve that Fourier transform formula, we are going to get the function value as infinity. That's why for solving U of t and signum, signum function Fourier transform, we were using limiting process or properties we were used there, used there, right? So for some sort of signals, we cannot find Fourier transform, very complicated. And some cases, definitely the result may be a infinite, infinity may be there. Because Dirichlet's conditions, necessary and sufficient conditions to be satisfied to implement a Fourier transform formula, okay? So, and one advantage with Laplace transform is that for some signals which are not having Fourier transform, for some signals which are not having Fourier transform, there will be Laplace transform existence is possible. Laplace transform existence is possible. So that's why we can study Laplace transform mainly for analyzing system performance, system stability. System stability can be analyzed and as well as transfer function we can find and we can solve differential equations easily. Differential equations we can solve. So these are the applications of Laplace transform. Okay. What are the applications of Fourier transform? We can sketch the spectrums, right? Like magnitude spectrum, phase spectrum, and also using Fourier transform, uh, Convolution in time domain gives multiplication in frequency domain. Like that, some properties were there. Using those properties, we can calculate, we can find transfer function of the system, we can find the impulse response of the system. So, all those applications, whatever system related applications are there, we can implement them using Laplace transform also. In addition to those applications, we can find transfer function, we can mainly stability. Stability can be analyzed, and also we can solve differential equations in addition to the applications of Fourier transform. These are the few more applications of Laplace transform, okay? So disadvantage with Fourier transform is that necessary and sufficient conditions are there. And first of all, that signal must be absolutely integrable to find the Fourier transform of a signal, isn't it? So in case of Laplace transform, for which some signals we are unable to find Fourier transform, right? For those kind of signals, there is a chance of existence of Laplace transform with some restrictions in the region of convergence. Okay, what is mean by region of convergence? We will see later. Because as of now, just understand that for some sort of signals, we cannot find Fourier transform. We cannot analyze them in frequency domain. Those signals can be analyzed in S domain. Okay, why we are studying Laplace transform means system performance can be analyzed. System, whether it is stable or not, and transfer function. Also, we can find the response output of your system. We can solve differential equations. Isn't it? These are the applications of Laplace transform. Clear? Copy this. Please make a note of applications also. Under existence of Laplace transform only, put the heading applications. Note all these applications. And why we are going for Laplace transform is Fourier transform, some disadvantage is there. Because the signal must be absolutely integrable to find the Fourier transform. 
So for in such cases, we can go for Laplace transform, where Fourier transform existence is not possible. Clear? Shall I erase this total content? Do you want me to repeat any point? Okay. Now see here, existence of Laplace transform. Actually, what is the formula we have? X of S formula, what we have? Minus infinity to infinity, X of T into E power minus ST DT. This is a formula to find Laplace transform of the signal X of T, right? But what is S here? Sigma plus J omega, real part of S plus imaginary part of S. Now let us substitute S in the kernel over here. Copy the in everything, whatever content I'm sharing here. In place of S, sigma plus J omega T DT, right? Now, minus infinity to infinity, X of T into E power minus ST into E power minus J omega T DT, okay? This is similar to the formula of Fourier transform, but in place of X of T, what we have? X of T into Sorry, this is what I have to write here. What I have to write here, e power minus sigma t, right? So this is the function due to which there is a chance of existence of Laplace transform. That means because of addition of this extra exponent, e power minus sigma. So sigma is having a lot of importance in Laplace transform. So e power minus sigma t, this function is making the integration to be a finite quantity that we will understand later. So here for the existence of Laplace transform, the condition is that, the condition is that minus infinity to infinity, the magnitude of x of t into e power minus sigma t dt must be less than infinity. Please put it in your box. So this is a condition for existence of a Laplace transform. Minus infinity to infinity, magnitude of x of t into e power minus sigma t dt must be less than infinity this integration must be a finite quantity okay this must be absolutely integrable so this is a condition for the existence of a laplace transform in case of fourier transform simply minus infinity to infinity magnitude of x of t dt must be less than infinity so here one more extra term is added that is e power minus sigma t sigma is some constant but t is a variable here clear So this is a main point here, two marks question we can expect what is the condition for existence of Laplace transform means this one, minus infinity to infinity, x of t into e power minus sigma t dt must be less than infinity. So this is a condition for existence of Laplace transform. Copy it. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. Next, put the heading, relation between relation between Laplace transform and Fourier transform. Relation between Laplace transform and Fourier transform. Okay. relation between Laplace transform and Fourier transform. So this is also two mass question we can expect. And also it is important in analyzing the system responses, finding system problems, transfer function and all. 
so if you can remember fourier transform pairs easily you can remember laplace transform pair because the is a relation pairs means what was the fourier transform for delta of t 1 like in e power minus at into u of t fourier transform is 1 by a plus j omega like that's rectangular pulse fourier transform is sink function triangular pulse fourier transform is sink square function whatever fourier transform pairs we have represented in a table in the same manner laplace transform pairs are also that if you can remember the property statements of Fourier transform, easily you can derive properties of Laplace transform. Same properties are there like linearity property, time shifting, frequency shifting and all. Same properties are there for Laplace transform also. Okay. So Fourier transform, the proofs same steps will be there in the proof for Laplace transform also. Okay. That's why you can do easy with that. So let us derive the relation between Laplace transform and Fourier transform now. See here. What is the formula we have for Laplace transform of x of t minus infinity to infinity signal multiplied with kernel. Isn't it? This is a formula for x of s, which is nothing but L operator. Laplace transform of x of t. Clear? x of s equal to Laplace transform of x of t. This is a formula. Now, what is s I said here? Sigma plus j omega. That means x of s equal to minus infinity to infinity x of t into substitute in place of s sigma plus j omega here t dt. Now, separate the exponential terms in the Rayali e power minus sigma t into e power minus j omega t dt. Now, if I substitute sigma equal to 0, sigma equal to 0, then let us take sigma equal to 0 here. What happens when sigma equal to 0? x of t e power 0 value is 1 e power minus j omega t dt that means this is nothing but what is this transform x, x of, of omega. omega so whenever your sigma equal to 0 your laplace transform and fourier transform both are same okay in s equal to sigma plus j omega, if you take sigma as 0, your x of s function and x of f omega function both are same. Clear? Next, one more definition is there. I mean, one more kind of representation is there, relation between Laplace and Fourier. Clear? Up to this, copied everyone? Yes, ma'am. Now, see here. Explain. S plane me is represented as on x axis real values of s on y axis imaginary part of s means here it is j omega and here it is sigma real part of s is nothing but sigma right and here it is j omega axis or imaginary part of s okay so in s plane if we compute, one more statement is that just now we have seen that whenever you are sigma equal to zero in S function, in S function, whenever you are sigma equal to zero, your Laplace transform and Fourier transform both are same. That means your X of S is analogous to X of omega whenever sigma equal to zero. So Laplace transform, after finding Laplace transform, generally we represent that function in S plane. Okay, this is a representation of S plane in S plane where x axis is nothing but sigma and j y axis is imaginary part of S that is j omega. So if you compute Laplace transform only on imaginary axis, only on imaginary axis, that is a one more statement given here. If you compute Laplace transform only on imaginary axis in S plane, that is nothing but Fourier transform. On imaginary axis, what are the values of sigma? What are the values of sigma on imaginary axis? Zero, right? Zero. Sig sigma equal to zero on y axis. Or x equal to zero on y axis. Similarly here, sigma equal to zero on y axis. So like that, one more definition is there. If we compute Laplace 
because everything is programmable here if we compute laplace transform on imaginary axis nothing but this axis in s plane on s plane it is nothing but fourier transform if we compute laplace transform on the imaginary axis on s plane then fourier transform and laplace transform are same please write this statement so mathematically we have seen this proof and in the graphical representation s plane is a term we use in laplace transform in s plane x axis is nothing but real part of s y axis is imaginary part of s so whenever your sigma equal to 0 means we are taking laplace transform only on imaginary axis this vertical axis that is nothing but fourier transform both are same so if we compute laplace transform on imaginary axis on s plane then fourier transform and laplace transform are same so this is about the topic relation between laplace transform and fourier transform completed yes ma'am Okay. Next. So advantages. Some statements are there, and similarly, we are also having limitations. So advantages also. Please write here. Here, important because Laplace transform based on Laplace transformation. One separate subject is there in your next semester. Laplace transform. and numerical methods okay separate subject is there just to copy the advantages write down the first point under advantages signals which are not convergent signals which are not convergent in fourier transform are convergent in laplace transform just now we have seen right e power minus sigma t must be less than infinity integration x of t into e power minus sigma t it is making the function to be convergent that extra term e power minus sigma t okay signals which are not convergent in fourier transform are convergent in laplace transform means there is a chance of existence of laplace transform for those kind of signals that is the first advantage next convolution in time domain can be obtained by multiplication in s domain same property is there convolution in time domain gives multiplication in frequency domain the same property is applicable for laplace transform also convolution in time domain can be obtained by multiplication in s domain these two are the advantages of laplace transform and one more last important point application or advantage is that integral and integral and differential equations integral and differential equations of a system of a system can be can be converted into can be converted into simple simple algebraic equations simple algebraic equations so what is the advantage of this means lti systems can be easily analyzed using this point lti systems can be easily analyzed because most of them are having relation in different using differential terms representation right can be easily analyzed so these two are the advantage what is the first one signals which are not convergent in fourier transform are convergent in laplace transform similarly convolution in time domain can be obtained by multiplication in s domain next last point is integral and differential equations of a system can be converted into simplified simplification is easy using s domain functions okay 
by applying inverse again we can get back our original time domain equations okay systems can be converted into simple algebraic equations induk solve cheyadaniki manaki em use where it is applicable means lti systems input output relations are generally given by integral and differential equations okay so which are simplified using laplace transform so these three are the advantages of laplace transform next limitations hope you have copied this limitations you right can anybody guess what is the main disadvantage with this frequency response cannot be plotted spectrums frequency response of the system cannot be drawn this is the first disadvantage instead of frequency response we are having pole zero plot in s plane but pole zero plot can be drawn in s plane okay frequency response of the system cannot be drawn but instead of that pole zero plot is there which is used in stability analysis okay so this is a main drawback with the laplace transform done hey. yes ma'am next next one more point important point here roc important term region of convergence region of convergence write the definition first i'll explain the range of the range of values of sigma the range of values of sigma for which for which the integration is convergent is known as roc region of convergence is known as region of convergence simply we represent it as roc okay so here this roc does not depend on omega values imaginary values it does not depend on imaginary values we deal with only real part of s that is sigma what is the real part of s sigma it does not depend on imaginary values so here region of convergence means uh, while while discussing the topic existence of laplace transform we have come across one integration right that is minus infinite to infinite x of t into e power minus sigma t so for what values of sigma this integration is convergent convergent means it must be a finite function infinity raffold after substitution of these limits that integration value must be a finite quantity okay so for what values of sigma if sigma greater than 0 or sigma less than 2 say greater than 2 based on that extra terms whatever terms are there in solving the problems uh, you'll get idea about this so for what values of sigma that integration is having a finite quantity is known as region of convergence that means in s plane in s plane at a particular region let us say only positive side laplace transform will be existing negative side won't be there or sometimes that laplace transform may be existing only negative side here this integration may be infinite quantity like that some restrictions we are going to take on sigma so for range for what values of sigma there is a chance of existence of laplace transform existence of laplace transform means integration value must be a finite quantity infinity raffold okay both the definitions are same so the range of values of sigma for which that integration is convergent is known as roc roc is a criteria related to sigma values only but it does not depend on imaginary values omega values kon man kaavasaram led roc means we deal with only 
sigma because omega pi na restrictions already over in second chapter fourier transform lo already chusam integrations were some integrations were not convergent using e power j minus j omega t exponent that's why here one more extra term is added that is e power minus sigma t definition is range of values of sigma for which that integration is convergent is known as region of convergence here as of now this definition is sufficient copy this Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Next, put the heading. Important poles and zeros. Poles and zeros. Poles and zeros. So here, in general, your function x of s. is going to be a polynomial that means in terms of s cube plus s square like that some functions will be there d of s means numerator some function will be there denominator some function will be there uh, for example you can take s plus 1 by s square plus 2s plus 1 any function some numer it may be constant also 1 by s square 2s plus 1 may also be there okay numerator may be a constant denominator may be a constant but in general it is going to be n of s by d of s okay so here actually the poles the definition of poles is that the roots of denominator the roots of denominator how can we find the roots of your denominator how to find the roots the roots of denominator are known as poles are known as poles then how to find the poles how to find the roots of denominator then roots etla osthay manaki s square plus 2s plus 1 how to find factors. the roots factors that means by equating denominator to zero isn't it by equating how to find the pole values means whatever denominator function is that by equating it to zero so poles can be calculated poles can be calculated by equating denominator to zero that means here in our problem i mean just example whatever i have taken here S square plus two s plus one equal to zero. Then what are its roots? S plus one whole square equal to zero. Then what about s value here? Minus one. S equal to minus one means only imaginary value. Imaginary value is not there. Only real part is there. So only one pole is there at s equal to minus one means that is sigma equal to minus one. Okay. So let us continue this in next class. Poles and zeros concept. so this is a definition of poles similarly the zeros are also there after calculating poles and zeros we represent them in s plane to analyze the stability and also to study about the system function